Hi, in this lecture, we are going to see two other extremely important examples of divide and conquer algorithms. The first is for the problem of matrix multiplication. Here, the input are two n by n matrices, like here, A and B, and we want to compute their product, which is another n by n matrix. Note that the input length is n square. However, it is common to parameterize this problem by the length of the side of the matrix, n. As we should all know, each entry of the product matrix is an inner product of a row of A with a column of B. So you multiply 0 plus times 0, then you do plus 1 times 1, plus 0 times 1, plus 0 times 0. If you wrote this, you get a 1 and you write it here. Every entry is computed like this. So these outputs are size n square, so you need at least n square time just to write down this output. And the simple way to do matrix multiplication that I just described would take time n cube because for each of these entries I'm doing this inner product which takes time n. So the simple way takes time n cube and after Karatsuba we are naturally going to ask if you can do any better. And as you may expect the answer is yes. Strassen famously gave a faster algorithm for matrix multiplication. Again, the input is two n by n matrices A and B, and the output is the product matrix C. Strassen is a striking example of a divide and conquer algorithm. The divide is as follows. We are going to divide each of the input matrices A and B into four matrices, okay. each of size n over 2 by n over 2. Okay. So we take the original matrix A, we divide the rows in half, we divide the columns in half, and we obtain these uh, four submatrices. Same thing for, for B. Okay. And we are interested in computing the product A times B, which is going to be some other four submatrices, uh, each of size n over 2 by n, n over 2, giving, giving overall an n by n matrix. The conquer step is as follows it is very non trivial. And I'm showing it just to show you that it exists. Um, but basically, you follow the Karatsuba idea and you just compute uh, seven matrix multiplications. Okay. Um, where each of these multiplications uh, is a multiplication between. Uh, some matrices which is obtained just by summing or subtracting, subtracting some other matrices that we constructed earlier. And from these seven, you can do a non-trivial combined steps just by summing and subtracting the seven matrices to obtain the four matrices that you want. I'm basically just showing you, uh, just flashing this uh, combine and conquer uh, steps because uh, this is a very important algorithm. I want you to know that it exists. Um, I'm not telling you how you can uh, uh, come up with this combine and conquer uh, uh, steps, but you know, if you sit down and you do lots of calculations, uh, uh, you can derive them. The running time that you get uh, um, has the following regression. So to multiply two n by n matrices, uh, 
uh, it's enough to perform uh, seven multiplications of n over 2 by n over 2 matrices plus uh, some constant uh, number of matrix additions. So the recursion is of the type 7 times t of n over 2 plus theta of n square, because the time for addition is n square. And for this, uh, you, you can do a recursive tree, just like we've seen for Karatsuba, and you will get a time which is a theta of n to the log base 2 of 7, which is order of n to the 2.81. Again, it's natural to ask if you can do faster. And in fact, uh, um, the running time is so important that uh, it has a name. Omega is known as the smallest number such that you can, mu you can multiply m by a matrices in time n to the omega plus some epsilon for some, for any sufficiently small epsilon. So the bottom line is that you can multiply the matrices in time n to the omega up to lower order factors that we don't care about. Omega is always at least 2 because you have to write down the, the output. We have just flashed Strassen algorithms which uh, runs in time uh, which has omega uh, less than 2.81 and I want you to know that there are even fancier algorithms uh, uh, which achieve omega less than 2.38. Determining omega is a very prominent uh, problem in uh, computer science. And this is all that we're going to say about matrix multiplication. Um, now we turn to a second example uh, of the divide and conquer algorithm for this video. And it's essentially the fast Fourier transform. So the, the fast Fourier transform uh, is, is a widely used transformation uh, um, uh, that's widely used in, uh, say, audio video processing and other applications. Um, it is somewhat complicated, uh, but I want, I want to convey to you the main ideas. So I'm going to start with the most basic case of the fast Fourier transform. This this most basic case uh, is, the, um, is known as the walsh hadamard transform, okay? And it's the following problem. I'm going to consider a certain family of matrices known as Hadamard matrices. The matrix H sub i has through the i rows and through the i columns and is defined recursively as follows. H of zero is just the one by one matrix consisting of one. And the matrix H i plus one is a matrix consisting of four submatrices, where each submatrix is H i except the one in the bottom right corner, which is minus hi. So let's do a couple of examples. The matrix H1 would look like this, where I have taken four copies of the matrix H0, which is just the number one, and the copy in the bottom right corner as the minus sign. And the matrix H2 looks like this. H2 is a 4x4 four four matrix consisting of four submatrices. This is just the matrix H1, which is here. Again, the matrix H1. Again, the matrix H1. And again, the matrix H1 here. Okay. However, for this last copy, I have to flip the signs. So you get minus, 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 and plus. The problem that we are, that uh, we're interested in uh, is uh, multiplying a vector x of length n, which is equal to 2 to the k, the side length of the matrix, uh, by the corresponding Hadamard matrix. 
Okay, so we have a Hadamard uh, matrix and the vector, and we are interested in their product. The trivial way of doing that is computing the matrix vector product. Okay. That takes time n square. Okay, so each entry of the output is the inner product of one row of the matrix and, and the vector and takes time n. If you are through this n times, you will get time n square. And the fast wash Hadamard transformation allows you to compute the product uh, much faster in time order of n log n. And it is a fairly straightforward uh, divide and conquer algorithm once you have the definition of the matrix uh, clear. Okay. Specifically, if you want to multiply x by the matrix H of k plus one, H k plus one, then uh, you can write x as y z. So you divide x in half, and you know that the output of h k plus 1 times x is this vector here, where the first half would be h k y plus h k z, and the second half is h k y minus h k z. So the critical observation is that uh, recursively I just need to compute h k y and h k z, and then I can obtain my output uh, with the combined step, which simply sets the first half of the, of the output to the sum of the two, and the second half to the difference of the two. This gives uh, a recursion of the type Tn is equal to 2 times T of n over 2, plus order of n, which again resolves to order of n log n. This concludes our, our exposition of the wash Hadamard transformation. And the fast Fourier transform is, uh, at a high level, uh, the same thing. It's just that the matrix that you're working uh, with uh, has a, a more complicated structure. It's not just uh, 1 and minus 1. Um, it has a more complicated entries. and. Uh, um, that uh, requires uh, some uh, uh, additional mathematical notation like complex numbers, uh, uh, which for the moment uh, we postpone.